Hi everyone, it's Phil and today's question is going to give us practice on using the rules of the variance operator and the covariance operator. We've got two random variables x and z and we combine them in a linear way to make another random variable y. We're given some facts, we told about the variance of x and the variance of z, the components of y, and we're asked to determine the correlation between z and the new random variable y. So we start by writing down the definition of the correlation. It's the covariance between the two divided by the product of the standard deviations. The standard deviations for each variable being the square positive square root of the variance. I want to be clear, a student makes errors here when they say they're talking about random variable and it gives us the variance of that random variable, that's like that's the population, that's like you can imagine the population variance. It is not the sample variance. So these guys here are not it's not like, let me just write it, what you will not be using here. Okay, you're not doing this. This is the population variance, this is the sample variance. When we're dealing with random variables, these are population. So I've got to work out, well, the bottom part's done, isn't it? Because I just have to take the square root of the variance of x, square root of 3 down here, and this one is square root of r. Well, all right, I've got, to, I've got to deal with that. So I've got that to deal with and that to deal with. Let's look first at the covariance. Right, the two rules we need are this. So let S, T and R be the random variables, A and B be uh, constants. Then this is like taking S through, it's like a linear operator, it takes through onto each of these guys, so that plus and then the covariance of this with that lump. Also, the covariance between S and this, where you have the constant, the constant comes out, and then it's covariance of S and T. Both these we can show using the, can prove using expectations. So applying rules one and two, I get this and this. Now the covariance of some, a random variable in itself is the variance, and this guy, okay, what's the covariance between X and Z? it's zero. Why? Because we're told that x and z are independent. Well, if they're independent, it means that there's no correlation between them. That's the same as saying then if no cor zero correlation, that means that the covariance is zero. So in short, if x and z are, indep are independent, that implies the covariance is zero. But not the converse. Right, so we can calculate this. This is just 2 times, and the variance of x is 3, so it's 6. So next I need to find the variance of y. y is in terms of x and z, this. And to work this out, using the variance rules, given the information we've got, we need this rule 3. And you, some of you have seen this before. And I can prove this as well using the expectation rules and I have done this proof uh, a couple of years ago, it's on YouTube. Right, so this, I'm going to just apply it now. So I apply 3 onto this, just check it. Careful that this is 12, but actually it doesn't matter. Why? Because we know the covariance of x and z is 0 by independence in the question. So now just put in the numbers, we're given the variance of x, we're given the variance of z. So just work it out, you'll find that it's 30. Now we've got all the numbers we want, we can just substitute it here. Okay, so that's substituted in, that just simplified it, and then that's in a decimal form. I have no way of knowing whether this is co correct, but I do know that its correlation is between, takes value between plus to minus one, including the endpoints, plus and minus one, and this is in that interval, so I've got a chance it's correct. We can see then, then we can say that there's a positive correlation between x and y. In other words, if we had a scatter plot and it makes sense for this correlation if it's like continuous data, so suppose it's like this, then I know it's upward sloping. Alright, so if x goes up, y tends to go up, that's what this is saying.
and whether it's strong or not well that depends on the application the, the data set and what uh, historical data sets have um, numbers they've got as well okay so that share like comment 